So today it's pre-emergent time and although it's been pretty cold here and it is supposed to be cold coming up as well, sometimes you have to deal with when it might rain and the forecast looks like there's a very good chance of getting some decent rain this weekend and then coming up after that I'm not seeing a whole lot of decent chances for rain and when you don't have an irrigation system and pre-emergent needs to be watered in then you just have to pick your timing on when you think you can get that watered in well. Now I could probably wait slightly longer but getting it down earlier rather than later is okay too. So pre-emergent is something that you can do to prevent crabgrass and other weeds in your lawn which will typically show up in the summer. So right now we're at a good time here before everything germinates in your lawn to put down pre-emergent and when those weeds try to come up that barrier will stop them and you won't have any crabgrass problems. There's also some other weeds that are prevented by this but typically people are talking about crabgrass because it can become quite a, an issue on lawns in the summertime if you don't have any pre-emergent or if you haven't really been caring for the lawn for a little while. Now you may have heard me say as well that I don't usually like to put down fertilizer with my pre-emergent. The reason for this is that a lot of these fertilizers with the pre-emergent mixed in contain a pretty good amount of nitrogen and in the early spring this can just cause a lot of excess growth on your yard. If you can't keep up with mowing it then that becomes an issue. But today I found a local granular option, contains a small amount of nitrogen with prodiamine as the main ingredient for the pre-emergent. And on my neighbor's project lawn, we're only in the second season right now of taking care of it. So last year we started out with some pre-emergent as well. That did an amazing job in the summer for preventing crabgrass. I was extremely happy with what I saw the year before without it. And then last year with it, I didn't see much breakthrough at all, so it was awesome. But with him only being on the second year of this program here, it's okay to add a small amount of nitrogen to his yard early spring. He's keeping up with the mowing. He knows all about that, so I'm not worried about it. If you have any of these sorts of turf supply places in your area, which I'm sure you probably do, that would be somewhere where a lawn company would go to, lawn and landscape type pro company, would go to get their supplies. And usually homeowners can go in there and buy standalone bags as well. So check with your place that's in your area. But if you can, it's an option that usually comes in cheaper than going to Home Depot or something like that. The reason that more people like the Home Depot stores or something like that is because those bags in those stores are designed for homeowner use. They usually have settings on the back of the bag for a typical spreader that you would have as a homeowner. Now these bags that you get from the turf supply stores are more designed for the pro and will usually have a pro spreader type setting on there so that's the only difficult part about it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with getting something locally at a Home Depot and just looking at the back of the bag for your homeowner spreader setting and going with that. It works fine, that's a great option, but it just can be slightly more expensive. So if you're okay with the ease of use of it, not having to think about any of this in terms of measuring it out, no big deal. But today I'm going to show you how to apply this to a yard and how to measure it as well. I want to do a split application of this product, meaning in early spring I'm going to split my total rate for the year of what I want to apply into two and just split that in half. So I'm going to go with the medium rate here of three pounds of product per thousand square feet. That should typically get me all the way till the end of summer and prevent everything in between. The only settings here listed are for Spiker or Lesco or all of those spreaders that you would see a lawn care company use, which most homeowners don't have. So it's not that difficult though. All I need to do is figure out the square footage of my area. It tells me that I need three pounds of product per thousand square feet to apply at that rate. So all I need to do is take three pounds of this bag times however many square feet I have, put it in my spreader, and spread it out evenly. So I also said that there's a small amount of nitrogen in the bag. It's only 13% here and 5% potash. So if I'm applying that at three pounds per thousand square feet, I can take three pounds that I want to apply times the nitrogen percentage, which is 0.13, and I come up with 0.39 pounds of nitrogen on the ground at that rate. So it is definitely a small amount 
very manageable that will be able to keep up with mowing and no excessive growth should come from that. Okay, so I have a simple kitchen scale here. So usually I just like to take some sort of plastic container and I'm gonna put that on there. We're gonna see what that weighs. Going to hit the tear function to zero that out. So I have 4,000 square feet that I need to cover. So I need three, six, nine, 12 pounds of product to go into my spreader. So usually I'll add one extra bucket full and that way when you get to the bottom of your spreader, sometimes you'll notice it doesn't spread very evenly when it's getting to sort of the bottom of your amount. So if you add one more bucket full of this, there should be three extra pounds left over in the spreader when you're done. So you might be saying now, well, I don't know exactly what spreader setting to use because there's no spreader setting on this bag. So all I'm going to do is set this at a low setting, make sure I'm getting even flow coming out of the spreader, and then I'm going to cover my area, and then I can either re-measure at that point to see how much I have to apply left, or after you've done this a couple times, if you have the same size fertilizer or you use the same types of fertilizer, you're going to get a feel of what setting needs to go on here and your walk speed and how to apply it evenly. And again, the same thing that I said earlier applies, is that that's really the whole reason why these pre-emergence and things like that exist at Home Depot with spreader settings for these spreaders on the back because people don't want to spend the time to figure out what the setting is and try to do all of that. But if you're looking to save some money, you want to actually learn the process and why to do it, that's why I'm showing you this today. So I'm going to set this right away to a spreader setting of four. Give that a whirl and see how much is left at the end because I can always apply another time in a different direction to the lawn. Alright, I'm done with one round of spreading now and it definitely looks like I have about half left. So that was a pretty good setting for one time. Now I'm going to go over it again in the opposite direction and see what I have left at that point and measure it out. So now I should have three pounds left over in the hopper. I can kind of tell from what's in here, it looks like it's more than that. What I need to do now is just take this out and measure it and see how far off I am, or if I need to apply another dose at my small amount, I can do that. So now I've got three pounds taken out of there and you can see what's left. So I was close, but I could go probably one more round on this. So I'll go back out. Same settings, put out one more round, that should cover it. So you're probably thinking to yourself right now, this seems like a lot of work. Why don't you just go out and pick a setting that's close and apply it? Well, after you learn your spreader, and if you stay pretty consistent on fertilizers and pre-emergence that you use, you write these numbers down, then the next time you do it, you're not gonna have to go through all this trial and error of measuring everything out. You're going to know close to what your setting is and you're going to be able to remember what that is and then you just go apply and it's much easier. But for those of you who have never done this before and you need to understand the importance of actually accurately putting down the amount that you want, this is why I'm doing that today. All right, so I have one more application put down. Now I'm gonna measure this out. Very, very close. So I applied about one pound extra spread over 4,000, so I'd be slightly over the three pounds per thousand square feet, but not any extreme amount, and I'm happy with that. A Couple other things to note is this needs to be watered in, and that's why I'm putting it down today with 
90% chance of rain tomorrow and the next day as well. So needs to be watered in about a half inch is recommended and that says it needs to be watered in within 14 days of the application but you want it to start working right away so water it in right away as soon as you can. And also with the split application method, I'm applying between 50 and 55 degrees soil temperature and then when soil temperatures reach about 70, I'll be applying this exact same rate again and that will get us all the way through summer. And the other thing that you have to do that's an absolute must is make sure that you blow off the driveway and sidewalks with a blower or take your broom and go ahead and remove that from the sidewalks because you don't want any of that product washing away down into the sewer system. You want it in the lawn where it's supposed to be, make sure you do that. It's extremely important to make sure that that doesn't end up down the sewer system. Usually we spray at one gallon per thousand square feet. So if you've got 80, you got a little over 80,000. All right, so that's five and then I'll need 2.4 more, but if you want to get your tank starting to fill with water, I'll dump it in. So I'm back out here today at the big project lawn and we are putting down some crabgrass pre-emergent. And so if you have a large property, I'm gonna show you today the, probably the best, most economical thing that you can do to apply is crabgrass pre-emergent to such a large area. And also I'll give you an update on sort of what things are looking like, but let's talk about the pre-emergent first. So this right here is prodiamine, which most of you who are starting to become familiar with pre-emergence, or even if you're not, is one of the active ingredients that a lot of people use. And so this comes in a water dispersible granule. So what that means is this little powder in here will go into that water tank, and then it becomes a solution that you put out onto the yard. Again, you need to time this so that things can be watered in because this needs to get down to the soil level and be watered in at least a half an inch or recommended a half an inch within 14 days. But the reason this is such a good option for people, especially with a larger yard, is because this is five pounds and we just mixed up 40 gallons at the low rate and that only took 7.4 ounces of product. So even less than half of a pound there. Especially for large properties, it's awesome, but otherwise, if you want the most economical way of doing this year after year, you're comfortable with a sprayer, um, even a backpack sprayer in your yard, then this is a good option. So we're using the low rate today because this is fairly new grass, so I don't want to hammer a bunch of pre-emergent onto it right away, do any sort of pruning to the root system. But also I'm gonna be doing the split application method again, so in about probably 30 to 45 days from now, just depends on soil temperatures. We'll be spraying this out again over this area. So doing lower rates and splitting those gives us a better chance of success or hopefully it will give us the best chance of success possible. So things are definitely not fully awake yet. This is tall fescue and a slight amount of Kentucky bluegrass, but tall fescue can have a little more time usually in the spring before it wakes up compared to other things, but also it makes up for that during the summertime when it does better in its heat tolerance than some of our other cool season grasses. The thing that we continue to deal with the most out here is this kind of soil that we have, which just does not have much nutrients in it. It's very clay based and it dries out quickly. So this is actually probably gonna look quite patchy on camera and it is quite patchy, but if you saw this last year before we did any of our spring seeding, which I talked about last season if you wanna see sort of where we started here, but I'm gonna show you a picture of where we started before we did any work last season and there was essentially nothing out here in this section really but a bunch of weeds and just a couple of thin pieces of turf, but mainly it was weeds. And then in the summertime, it became a sea of crabgrass, foxtail. So at the end of last year, I said, no matter what we do this season, we have to get crabgrass pre-emergent on this to give us at least a season of preventing that from taking over. And then in the fall time, we can hopefully come back and aerate heavily again, overseed, fertilize, give us a really good chance to get turf established going into the next season. You'll see this section down here though actually where a lot of our seed washed out to. Pretty thick turf strand down here. Especially with a big lawn like this, you just can't expect everything to happen overnight. There's a couple of big challenges. One is lack of irrigation. Two, just the budget that it takes to sort of not only have the equipment to care for everything, but also the money to sort of put into materials that you need. And there's just a lot of things there that you need to think about and sort of plan on renovating the lawn and section. So this main section out here was sort of what we wanted to tackle last year into this year and then this fall. 
The front section, I'm gonna go show you right now, is not quite as bad as this as far as patchiness goes. And we're gonna be treating that more this year, more frequently, hopefully, and see what kind of results we'll have. So my friend seeded this section last fall. There's actually a lot of good grass coming in here now starting to really nicely fill in so that's a good thing for this section and the front section is much thicker overall but like I mentioned I think we're gonna try to really push a small area this season do a lot of spoon feeding of fertilizers and stuff to it in smaller doses and see what kind of uh, results we can get out of that I'm excited here this season to continue this work here and make sure you're subscribed to see the rest of what we have going on out on this huge project yard. It's over 80,000 square feet. If you have any questions about pre-emergence, let me know down in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you next time. So yeah, remember when I said that I don't like marker dye? Mother.